Hey guys, what is going on? It is ARA Productions here, and welcome to a new video. So before we start, I am joined by... Will from NC Alarms. Yep, and we are going to be doing a new video. So, I bet you guys are wondering, Frank, why come out of hibernation now? Kind of an awkward time. Yes, I know it's an awkward time. I have not uploaded in about a month. That's for various reasons I do not plan on going into right now. But, long story short, it's just been mainly over school and my very low will to just want to do anything fire alarm related, but that has changed. So, there has been an interesting revelation in terms of my, like, the fire alarm board. I'm going to tell you guys now, we're going to walk over to here, and over here is the fire shield. I bet you're wondering, why is the fire shield not up right now? Well, that's because I'm not currently using the fire shield right now. No, it's not broken. No, it is not functioning anymore. No, I'm not selling it yet. I haven't decided if I'm selling it or not. But, it I don't need it right now anymore. Because there is something in place there. So, if we go over to the 5ED, you know, the 5ED is the same, but it's not on. 5ED is not even plugged in, but there is something plugged in. You'll see what that is in a minute. So, and then I have those two devices up there. And if you look over here, this is the FPL that was running to the fire shield that was like running behind there. And those two devices aren't connected and there's no pole station there. The, if the fire shield does make a return, it will go here. But, but you guys are dying of excitement to know what it is. So, the I did get a new panel. It is a very old panel. Not very old, but it is older, and it is very rare. It, its rarity outweighs its um, how old it is. So, you ready? Here we go. I got a Firelight Sensascan 2000. So, this is what the system looks like now. It looks very similar to the Fire Shield system. Not the panel itself, but like the way I have it done. You have your two pull stations here. I, ha I still have the 2400 and the 2100 here. These probably won't be changing. At least this won't. I can't say anything about that one. That might change once in a while, but as of now, it's not. And then there's the two notification appliances. So here's the panel. I got this from my technician, Vince. Um, Vince, if you're watching this, thank you again for this panel. I did get it normal. I had to clear, I want to say roughly about 12 troubles on it, maybe 15, but a lot of them were just putting resistors in places, but there's nothing wrong with the panel. As you can see, it is normal, and as you can see, the batteries are not in there, it's because we open the panel. Now, the only thing, of course, I dropped the key. The only thing wrong with the panel right now is I think it's mounted a little bit of an awkward way because it was, like, really heavy when my dad and I were trying to get it on the wall, so it just doesn't close properly. So, uh, the batteries are in here, and then there's the power source. So, if you look right here, the way that this panel is set up is it doesn't have, like, if you look in the, tr if you look in there, there's usually just, like, a transformer in there, same thing with the, um, 5ED, but this actually has its own, like, power supply in the panel, like, it's a full-grade power supply. So, the cool thing about this is that not only can, it has actually, this power supply has a lot of features. It can not only give, you can actually connect two separate sources to it. So if I wanted to, for example, connect it to two panels, I could, but I wouldn't necessarily want to do that. And then it also, it can have two inputs for power. So I could have it, I could have it connected to two outlets. So let's say if one of them decides to stop working, the other one would still feed it power. But the other thing with that is I wouldn't want to do that because I wouldn't want to overpower the panel. So, um, <clears throat> as you can see, it's connected to the batteries. The batteries are being jumped by that thing, and these are just extra like uh, plugs for other stuff. Um, so if we want to, here's like the little dress panel thing for this panel. As you can see, there's all your things, AC power, system power, supervisory signal, system trouble, enunciator module trouble, power failure, signal silence, disabled circuits, acknowledge silence, system reset, and lamp test. And we can actually do a lamp test like that. So... Anyway, um, if I'm not mistaken, or actually, let me go and let me open this. So, here's the panel. The wiring is a little messy, nothing too crazy, but I will explain what's what in a second. So, first of all, you, this panel is a modular panel, which means that these are actually cards that you can take in and out of the panel and replace them with other various cards. So, this is the actual CPU of the panel, which houses three buttons, 
um, when they're in basic function, those are just silence or uh, alarm or panel silence, system silence, reset, and lamp test. When you're programming, it is function select, point A select, which just means it will select, it'll go down, and then uh, point B select, which means it'll like go up in selections, and then this is state change, which means it'll like let you change whatever, whether it be the code, whatever. And the reason I know this is because there's actually a little bit of a cheat sheet here. I'm not going to pull it out of the thing because I'll have to take it out, but it's like a little piece of paper that you would... Uh, hold up to this and it would show you which LEDs would mean which section you're on and which button would mean whatever So it's essentially all that piece of paper is there for is to show you how to program the thing And it's actually not hard to program once you master it And for those of you who are curious to know the notifier equivalent of this panel is the system 500 Which I'm pretty sure some of you guys have seen in other videos like new age server alarm had a system 500, so this is the firelight equivalent of this. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, this is the main CPU. This is the zone card. As you can see, there's only this panel with this zone card only has four zones. Um, there could be room for eight, but it just wasn't added onto this card. Kind of like how the 5UD like has room for the extra zones. I don't have a firelight key. Actually, I have one in my pocket. It's on the ring. Like if you look into the 5UD. The only difference between keeping it a 10UD and a 5UD is the fact that it doesn't get filtered power and those right there, there could be room for more of them. They designed these panels the same way but they just don't solder on like a terminal block or a place for a terminal block to just decipher whether or not it be a 10UD or a 5UD. And there are 5UDs that do filtered power and there are 10UDs that don't, that do FWR. But the 5UD, the more common model does FWR, and the 10UD, the more common, common model does DC. But enough about that panel. And then this right here is a NAC extender card. Now, keep in mind, I'm not using this, and the reason you don't see the lights on here blink, well, you see those ones. But the ones on the right aren't blinking. I don't know why. I think either maybe the thing, the prong chip, or the things aren't in there all the way, or it's just because they're resistored off. But regardless, those are four extra NACs I could use, and I could wire them either Class A or Class B, as you can see here. Um, if it'll focus, there we go. Uh, the resistor to the first NAC is going is actually in the panel, but then the one to the second NAC is actually on the back of the alarm. So let me actually go over the devices because I think I've talked about the panel for a decent amount of time. And the way that you close this is it'll actually lock. I don't. Sometimes it'll yeah, it'll lock like that. And it might pop out in a second, but it's supposed to like lock there, like a spring lock thing. And then the way you take it, turn it, is you like take a little flathead and you just like push on it and turn and it'll open back up. So, enough about the panel. And by the way, I did get it to be normal if I didn't say that already. Um, okay, I, I'm not going to attempt to close that thing right now. We're already eight minutes in and we haven't even gotten to a test. I guess it's kind of, I have to go through explanation of this panel. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on how I got it. I just got it from a technician. A long story short, it was sitting on a build. It was sitting in a building for ten years, not even on. And he decided it was. He pulled it out. I think a few weeks ago, uh, when he was installing a NAC extender or some sort of like node to an EST system. So, yeah. So the panel is completely and fully functional. When I had first got it, it was the first time it actually had even been powered up in ten years, and it was actually. <clears throat> really cool. So let's go over the devices. Now, this panel was manufactured in 1994. So that means you would see typically with this panel in terms of pulse stations, you'd probably see BG10s with it accompanied by Gentex SHGs, um, Wheelock MTs, Wheelock EHs, or 7002Ts. Usually, those are typically the alarms you'd see with them. Um, you wouldn't see a mass. Will, would you like to explain why you wouldn't see system sensor masses on that panel, even though they were around at that time? No. Okay, then. That's Will, everybody. Um, you I see... I can't remember what I said. I think it was something along the lines of the mass wasn't like, you know... I don't know. I guess... I think it was something along the lines of it wasn't really like the... I don't know. I'm not going to get into detail. So, <clears throat> I think masses were more used on notifier systems than firelight systems. So, we have the firelight BG6 here because 
the BG sixes sometimes would be on the census scan 1000 panels and I didn't have an extra BG 10 cause I gave it to Alex, uh, cause I sold them some stuff and I gave him a BG 10 for free cause he needed one. And we have an ADT 5060S pull station. Now you, these were made in the nineties and you could see technically see these on a system like this, but since it's firelight, you most likely wouldn't, you would most likely see a BG 10. And I do have another BG-10 technically, but it's a notifier version and it's an agent release version, so I kind of just figured, you know what, screw it. Uh, like I said, still have the System Sensor 2400TH and the System Sensor 2100S. Now these are on the same zone, which is zone 1. And the pull stations, I think this is on zone 2 and this is on zone 3. Um, <clears throat> I bet you're wondering, well, why did I put... Um, smoke detectors on zone one. I originally put the smoke detectors on zone one because when I put the panel on the wall, I wanted to see if it would work. And I also wanted to see if I could just get it to go off because they were still had a bunch of troubles on it. So I just connected the smoke detectors because they were still had the FPL on them. And then I connected the SHG because the wire was still there. So, and then I kind of just built off of it from there. Uh, then we have the Wheelock EHDL1WM24, which was requested by both David and Will. And then the SHG, this is the first generation one that was made in 1996. And it um, <clears throat> was also requested by David, even though it was already up there. So, with that being said, uh, both of these are continuous because um, even though a panel like this does have two coding options, it has code 3 in March time, a system like this would most likely still be uncontinuous. So, put my ear protection on real quick, set the camera down. And <clears throat> just a bit of a heads up. Also, this panel does give out filtered power. This does. This panel does give out filtered DC, which is nice. Um, the march time on this panel is a bit awkward. It only does 110 beats per minute as to the newer Firelight panel, which can do 120 beats. Um, I, the explanation behind that is just the panel couldn't handle those extra 10 beats. Why? I don't know. It's just, whatever, however Firelight designed it, it couldn't. the panel couldn't handle it. And the Code 3 is a bit wonky as well. It's just the relays on there, I guess that can't handle it. Um, so the March time does sound a bit sloppy and so is the code three, but it's not too important. It does do filter power though. So let's get to the part you guys have been waiting for. Let's actually activate it. So Will, what do you want me to activate first? Go with the BG6. BG6, all right. So if you guys are epileptic or do not like bright strobes, I would not recommend watching this video. And if you are using earbuds or headphones, I'd turn your volume down now. So, here we go in three, two, one. Okay, so the system is silenced. Now, I think this is zone three, that's zone two, that's zone one, and that's zone four. So I can, tend, I will probably end up labeling these with like a Sharpie or something. Um, so yeah, and zone one will most likely say the smoke detectors for a while, so I'm probably just gonna have zone one permanently be smokes or whatever. So let's just reset the BG-10. And yes, the button of the... Oh. Okay, I did not know that. This panel apparently has re-alarm, and if you close the pole station and open it again, it'll reactivate the zone. That's interesting. I didn't know it had that either. Yeah, so watch. Let's open up the BG-6 again and see if it does it, or let's pull it again. Yep. Okay, that's a cool feature. Alrighty, so, that's interesting, so I guess it's cool that it has that feature. Most newer panels don't have that feature, but I guess it's kind of cool. So, now, uh, let's do the ADT pull station, so here we go, push in and pull down. Sounds like the, uh, the video where Brian's just constantly throwing up for 10 hours on 
Yeah, it's probably just because the microphone on my computer is crappy because it's a school laptop. And also, these are both, like, deafening loud. I'm just hoping on the video, the microphone doesn't get all distorted. It might get a little bit, but hopefully it's not to the point where I'd have to re-record the video. So I'll have to check the footage after this. But hopefully you guys are still seeing this video. So now, let us... Should I reset the system or uh, test the detectors? Actually, you know what? I'm going to hit one of the detectors, and then I'm going to... Um, reset it and then do the other one because I noticed the zone has to be reset for it to be able to do the re-alarm feature so I actually tried testing this detector before and then silencing it and then testing that but it did that one didn't trigger the alarm because this was technically still an alarm so watch I'll demonstrate so let's hit this one okay and then the only way to clear this from being an alarm is either A, reset the panel, or B, cut off the power of the detector directly. So if I hit this, it'll activate, but it's not going to do anything because this is still an alarm. So that's, the only difference between that is these can be reset. So if it were like, if it would have to wait for the panel to be reset. So let's actually do a system reset. All three zones are active. So let's hit reset. And this panel does have a piezo, it just, you probably can't hear it over the horns. So, system is normal. And let's hit the 2100. Actually, I'm going to use some uh, smoke saver for the 2100. Okay, so, here we go. What was that, Will? I hate to break it to you, but I do have to leave despite this being the middle of a video. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's fine. So, uh, if you guys can go check out Will's channel, go make sure you check it out. It'll be in the description. So, see you later, Will. I'll see you guys. So, alright. So, that's the end of that. So, <laughs> so I'll blow on the detector a little bit. Hopefully, it will not re alarm. Okay, detector's off. So, uh, anyway, guys, I think that's going to be it for the video. I know it's a bit long, but um, it's just because it's a big panel. It needs a lot of discussion. So, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the video down in the comment section, and let me know if you want to see more of this panel. Well, you obviously will, but if you want to uh, request a device or whatever, feel free to. And, uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and special shout out to Vince for helping me out, and special shout out to Larry Hall for helping me wire this monstrosity. So, thank you guys again, and I will see you later.